Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on a Daiwa Level Wind Line Counter Reel. This is the Daiwa SG uh, C-Line Graphite 27 Line Counter A. It's uh, a nice reel. Kurt sent me in a whole bunch of C-Lines to, uh, to service. I believe he's up in New Hampshire. And uh, when he sent them in for service, well, this one was in there. It was a 47 uh, H Great Lakes line counter, and uh, I did a video on that one as well. I'm not sure which one I'll post first, probably this one. But uh, if you have the Great Lakes line counter and you think that that's this reel, it's not. It's completely different, and uh, that's why I thought I would do this one in addition to it. This one does uh, say that it will work on the 47 LCA in addition to the uh, 27 and the 27 uh, LCA and uh, alike on the graphics. So what I did was I went out to the internet and I got the uh, burst diagram for this just so I know from the schematic that if I run into trouble I have a reference point to do that. Well we're going to start by taking the reel off and interestingly enough we got to take both sides off on this so I'm going to service the gear side first and uh, well one of the things that uh, I enjoy about uh, Second Chance Tackle is the opportunity to teach you how to do the real service yourself and how to gain the confidence you need to, well, attack just about any reel. And uh, before today, I've never been inside one of these, but, uh, well, now I will be. So, uh, if you like these kinds of videos, if you uh, want to see more of these, if you want to learn a little bit more about reel repair, maybe you're even thinking about a, a side hustle where you're going to open up a reel repair shop or something. Uh, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That will let you know when I'm posting. And, uh, well, you'll see if that's something that interests you. I work on all kinds of reels. And uh, if you are interested in it, uh, you can watch it. And if not, well, that's okay too. I put all the pieces and parts I take into a parts tray. And now we're going to remove the side plate. There's something interesting here on this one. This has two washers that need to mount from the outside. You can't put them in from the inside. There's a ridge on the uh, plate. That doesn't mean anything to you now, but as you'll see in reassembly, it does become important. So uh, just kind of make a note of that at the moment. You need two different types of screwdrivers. You need a micro screwdriver because there's going to be three of these very small screws. There's going to be two of them up here by the line counter. There'll be one below underneath the, uh, the gear shaft. So just be careful to use the right tools. That way you won't uh, scar up or, or ruin the, uh, the threads or the heads of these. And uh, what I do is I like to take these out, lay them on my desk, make sure that they're all the same size and if they're not the same size, and in this case they're not going to be the same size on a couple of other screws in here, you just want to know where the long or the short screw comes from. These three screws are all the same size, so I'll just find the corner of that parts tray for them. Next up we have four bigger head screws. They're also Phillips head. And how this differs from the 47, the original C-Line 47C, uh, level wind, if you will, or the Great Lakes uh, line counter, LC, is that this one does not have the bridge in the side plate. This one has the bridge on the frame, which is completely different than the earlier architecture. So I did post, or I will post soon, the 47H uh, line counter in addition to this one. And uh, if you have that one, you'll be able to see how to service that. These four screws are the same. So we have two different types of screws there. And uh, now we should be able to lift off the case, just like that. Well, one of the things I like to say is take pictures. Here's what I was noticing here. There's two, two uh, tension washers. And there's a ridge in that case. So if in reassembly you tried to put them in this way, put them all on the stack first, you wouldn't be able to get the stack through the, uh, through the case. 
back side it's got nothing. It's got a line drive mechanism that controls the line counter. The main gear will drive this one and uh, just has the uh, free spool eccentric with the spring. So I'm showing you this. No, uh, no actions needed here. But if you want to, if maybe you've taken something off and you're trying to figure out where it goes, uh, well, that's why I'm showing you this side. A little bit of grease where the spool end will uh, uh, be housed. On this side, however, there's all the business of this reel. You have the main gear and a series of uh, uh, shaft attachments, including a ball bearing. You have two yoke springs. We're going to take them off right now because they have a tendency to get lost. And you have a jack underneath, and this is your anti-reverse uh, dog. Let's uh, pull off this assembly. So there's two flat metal washers, one top, one bottom, actually in this case two bottoms, and a bearing. I'm going to oil the bearing. I oil my bearings, I don't grease them. This is shielded, so the uh, oil should seep in there, and we'll put those aside for a moment. Next I'm going to take off the main gear. And I think what just came up was the click ratchet for that, which is okay. Then we're going to take off the pinion gear. And we're going to pull off the jack. That's just because we want to make sure all these parts are inspected and that they are clean. I'm going to wipe off the jack. Put a little bit of grease. The case is dry in the back there. I think that's what I found with most of Kurt's reels. A little bit of grease onto the back where it's going to slide up and down and move your pinion in and out. And then I'm just going to uh, well, leave it there for now. They go off and they go back on in the reverse order that they came off. So I'm going to clean the yoke. And you're going to notice on the back of this yoke, well, there's two things. There's some small washers that come off. They go on the post to hold the spring from collapsing. And there's just a little bit of an indentation here. That's going to face these points on the jack. I'm going to put grease onto the collar here. Inspect your pinion gear. If this was dirty, well, you'd certainly clean it up, but this one's dry. And that's kind of what I've noticed about all of these reels is the, the greases and oils have evaporated over time. There's a lot of sun damage on the reels that Kurt sent, and that's usually an indication that the reels have been sitting in a pretty hot place for a pretty long time. And, well, the uh, sun will take its uh, toll on the finishes on reels. It will also uh, become a problem when you go to uh, service a reel because, well, you probably don't have the greases there. Well, I just pulled that you know, reverse dog up and out of the way too much. Put that little washer back on the post. That's so that the spring doesn't trap inside the uh, post. And now we'll come up from the other side. This is a click ratchet. It's going to pop your, your uh, free spool back. You can see the long tag here. When that stud comes over, it's going to push that tag up. It's got a square on the bottom of it. You need to make sure that the square meshes firmly with the gear post. It can't sit high. And we'll show you probably push it up right now. Well, so it's going to come down like this and that stud's going to push it back up and out of the way. There's a washer I left on there. You want to make sure that you clean the back of the main gear. I'm going to push this whole assembly out now because it's got a series of washers in there. And another difference here, they're using felt washers on this reel as opposed to the harder or older leather washers that were in the, uh, the original versions of these reels. Inspect the teeth. Again, this is just, uh, they've all evaporated the greases and oils. And then put a nice fresh coating of grease, just like you did on the pinion gear. Do the same thing on the main gear. We can reinstall that next. And at this point, you can reattach the anti-reverse dog. This is always fun for me. Hold your finger on the post so that the spring does not shoot off. I need to use a micro pliers here. I never seem to have a lot of luck doing this. I 
I would generally like to do it with my hand, but oh, my fingers are too big. We're going to go the other way. Take the spring off the post. Loop it over the little beak on the anti-reverse dog. And I should have a little bit more luck here putting this back on the post. There you go. All right. So now we have the anti-reverse dog is set. If you want to test it, just kind of twirl your, your main gear. You can see it's working there. These are felt washers. Felt washers need to stay lubricated. If there was another thing that I noticed with the ones that Kurt sent me, it was that the felt washers were pretty well worn. There should be three. It's a six setup. So we have two that are called keyed washers, the rectangular. We have one that's called an eared washer. The first one in is the felt washer. I oil the felt washers. I just give them a good old bath of oil. The first of the keyed washers, that's the one with the rectangles. Make sure that your washers and your metals are clean and that they don't have any dirt or rust or debris on them. That'll only uh, shorten the life of, of washers, particularly felt washers. So felt washers are fine as long as you keep them lubricated. If they dry out, then they tend to tear. If you do find that the washer is tearing, you have the opportunity to replace them with Carbon Tex or other products. But you do not need to under normal use. That's your main stack. We're going to go back here, pick up the stack for the bearing. On the bottom we had a thick washer, then we had the bearing, then we have a thinner washer, kind of like a bearing shield, and then we have the one that's the same thickness from the bottom. That's the stack we in here. I'm going to take the two springs now for the um, case, and we can load the case back in now. There's a stud on here, and sometimes you have to work that stud in order to align it with the hole uh, in that jack. I'm going to go ahead and put this back in. Should go down straight and even. Line your studs and. When it's out like that, it generally means you have to trip the lever just like we did to pull that in. That's aligning the stud with the hole. We'll come back now and put those screws back in. I'm going to start kind of reverse of the way we took them out. I'm going to start with the, the three small ones. Just kind of makes sense to not keep switching tools all the time. Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in general, Maybe you're working on one and you're stuck. Maybe you want to know a little bit more about the history of the reels. Maybe you want to learn when the, uh, the reel was made or what the purpose of a line counter reel is. Or uh, you know, any question in general. How do you cast the reel? Is it a good casting reel? Whatever. Just leave those in the comment section. I do try to answer those. And uh, try to answer them in the morning following the videos being posted. I'm just looking at this... Um, the schematic here, it said it was printed in Tha uh, Thailand. Well, that's not correct. It was printed upstairs on my printer in New Jersey. I guess that means that maybe it was originally printed in Thailand. If this is a copy of the original, perhaps. I don't know. I always find those things curious. I, I suspect maybe this reel was made in Thai Thailand as well. I know Daiwa does have a plant there. All right, the four other screws go in the remaining holes. Sounds like we're getting a weather warning here. Wasn't paying attention. The three screws that have the tapers in them. side. Actually that one's fine. It's the one under here that has the, uh, the taper. 
got to note all these things. There's always a little curiosity in terms of how the wheels were designed or what purpose it served when they were designing it. This one has the little bevel on the bottom of it that the others do not have. And that goes into this one here, which has the corresponding bevel in the case. And the reason why that's there is so that they have the full swing and the free spool on. This has got some rod and reel cleaner on it. I'm using a pen rod and reel cleaner. I just want to clean off whatever grease I transferred, but also <coughs> there's been some, some damage on that. Let's go service the line guide next. And we'll go over and service the back side. The line guide has a cap that's holding a pole in it. Move it to one side. I just got lucky that it happened to be in the one side. If, if you gently tap down, you can usually tap out the pole enough that you can grab it. Pull out the pole because this is what you want to take care of. On these things, you usually see a lot of dirt and debris, and that's exactly what's going on here. You need to clear that from the channel on both sides. You can kind of see how it's all just matted up there. So you need to take that, get that cleaned away so that the pole can travel easily in the line guide. You can go ahead and install that back in. That has to seat, so if you hold your line guide to one side, you can generally work it down to where it's seated like that. There is a small uh, copper colored cap, I don't know if it's copper, but there is a small little washer inside the cap there. Make sure that uh, it stays in there, that gives you the right spacing for the line guide. I can't tighten that now because the, the uh, real seat is in the way, but we'll move that over in a moment. Last thing then to service is the non-gear side. We want to pull the spool out. There should be a bearing in the case back here, and uh, you want to make sure that that gets oiled as well. There's three screws here. Do the same thing. Take them out, put them next to each other, make sure that they're all the same size. Nine times out of ten, they're going to be the same size, but you don't want to surprise yourself one time when you're doing it and find out that they're not. Okay, now check the idler gear. Make sure all the teeth are there and good. Drop of oil onto the bearing like we did with the other one. Drop of oil onto the shaft near the um, line guide. And I just, uh, generally speaking, I like to take penetrating oil and just shoot it under the worm drive gear there just to get inside of that. Okay, there's a little washer that just came out on off the spool. There was nesting in there. If uh, you want, take it and put it on the spool the way it belongs. So it's on the back there. Clean up any dirt and debris that's on the spool. Check the teeth on the spool and make sure that the gears are all instead. You know, sometimes if you find that you've got a skipping line guide, it's not the idler gear, it's the, the gear on these teeth. All right, a little bit of grease back onto the main shaft of the spool. We'll close this up and we'll finish. Oh, a little bit of dirt on that side. Let's get that out. Problem there. It's easy enough for dirt to get into these because you can't seal a conventional wheel. Right, let's get that in. I'm going to take the opportunity to move the line guide over to the side now so that I can uh, tighten that cap. That was the last piece we had to do there. Let's go realign the side plate then. And if you find that the side plate is, is not uh, cooperating with you, just turn the handle. That worm gear is not meshing with the plastic uh, idler gear inside. We'll complete this piece. We'll go over and finish the front side of the reel. We'll give it a test and we'll see how we did. And Kurt, they're all done. They're all ready to come back to you to keep fishing. <coughs> You have two video stores in the lot. You have the Great Lakes 47 LC, and now you have the SG27 LCA. Remember the two tension washers? They go in from the outside. You can't put them on from the inside. Of course, if you've moved down that path already now, you kind of know that. So if you haven't got back to reinstalling it, 
understand that those come in from the front. Take your star adjuster, work it in by hand, make sure it turns on nice and free and easy like this one. Then we have a little um, washer that sits in the recess there, kind of keeps the space between the star adjuster and the handle. The handle goes next. Getting close to a final test here to make sure that it all runs well. Again, use your hand to tighten the screw on these. At least get it started. That way you know that it's not cross stripping. Got too many tools. This one uses a lot of tools. Too many tools on my bench. Okay. Tighten the, the handle nut. When it's perpendicular to that screw hole, it generally will line up with the hole on the cap. And we have that line. Yep, I need to back it off just the slightest amount. That should do it. Let's take the tie down cap for our tie down screw for this. Put that in play. Let's give it a test then. So, what did we do? We completely took the reel apart. We examined all the pieces and parts. We checked for any defective ones. This is in good condition. We've cleaned as best we could the case. Tried to take care of some of that sun damage that uh, has been occurring on his reels. Uh, reassembled after inspection. We greased re and re-lubed. Showed you the felt uh, washers inside the drag and how those get serviced. And well, now it's time for a test. Well, this one spins free and easy. Those ball bearings make quite a difference from the bushings in the 47H. And that's showing you that automatic chip that we were talking about before. Well, that's it. That's your Daiwa Sea-Line SG70 LCA. Beautiful reel, ready to go fishing again. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I hope you take the opportunity to service your reels. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do. I appreciate all of your efforts and your career choice. To everybody, please stay safe, stay well, good luck on the water, have a great day fishing if that's where you're headed, if not, have a great day doing real repair, if not that, have a great day watching my videos. Again, please subscribe. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, wishing you the best.